Hi Sagittarius, welcome. So Sagittarius, this is going to be your reading. I'm gonna start with the general messages. Then we're gonna get into the you versus them love reading. There is no time stamp on this because my readings are timeless. So I just trust that whenever you find this, that's when it's for you. And let's get into it. So you have the card of Uranus, which is all about revolutions and changes. It's about breakthroughs, brainstorming, insights. Um, sometimes this can be a bit of a surprising energy. <clears throat> I don't get full tower vibes with this energy, but it does kind of remind me of like that erratic nature or unstable nature to the tower. So just be something to be aware of. You may want to expect the unexpected, but overall, everything that happens to us is for our highest good. So sometimes the unexpected is brings us enlightenment, brings us a new pathway, brings us joy or different things to be happy about right so uh try to see it as a positive here sagittarius you have um the card of stress out the number seven the card of the rebel and awareness wow what is this about keep those over here so i feel like this is really interesting to me like take a look at this depiction here move up a little bit closer now close and personal with you. Um, <laughs> you see this card? This person is um, balancing on a balloon with all these things going on. And then this little monkey here is about to pop the balloon. So there's a lot you can take away from that depiction right there. And it says a lot, but it, it's just a sense of like feeling like you have too many, you know, things up in the air that you're juggling too many things that you know at any moment the ball could drop it's a sense of overwhelmment a sense of stress right as the card would indicate and some of you really wanting to break through or break free from that or maybe having a breakthrough right sometimes the things that lead us to change are the uncomfortable things the things that really put you know the stress on us that really light that match that says okay enough is enough i've had enough and so there's some sort of awareness coming out of this. And some of you may be reaching that conclusion that this is enough. I've had enough. I need to step away from this or I need to handle this differently or maybe this isn't for me, you know. So I feel that there's some sort of awareness coming out of maybe a stressful situation that you're trying to break free from during this time frame, Sagittarius. And it's all with purpose, right? Now, the other set of cards I got out are much more kinder, much more chill. Um, you have the card of understanding, experiencing, and harmony. So there's some like higher level understanding that's coming through a situation that maybe at the ground level feels very stressful. And I also got the word mundane. Okay, take it or leave it. Um, where, you know, it's like not really being able to discern at the time why something is happening, but there is a purpose to it all, as I said. And out of this is actually coming a higher understanding of yourself, some sort of new experience that is going to bring more harmony into your life. So this should be interesting. Let's get into it and see what else we have coming through for my Sagittarius. What else for my Sagittarius? What does Sagittarius need to know? Okay, I have a Madonna song in my head. Uh, it actually came through when I was meditating before doing the reading. Um, and I'm just getting one simple lyric and she says, Time moves slowly. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know if that's the actual lyric. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's funny because, like, um, I think what she's actually getting at in that video or in, in the song is that actually, you know, the time that, I, am I saying this wrong? For some reason, the message that I got along with that has to deal with aging and, like, how it feels like time goes really slowly when we're children and when we cannot wait to be adults, and then we become adults, and it's like, blink, 10 years are gone. 
blank another 10 years, blank another 10 years. Like I'm telling you, time speeds up. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> I don't know if you're having like, uh, feeling like time is speeding up for you or you're thinking about aging or, um, I know that contradicts the actual song lyric that time moves slowly because it's a contradictory statement. First of all, we're always propelling forward and we're only ever in the present moment, which is now. So it can seem like things are moving slowly, but it's actually moving quite rapidly. I don't know if that's making sense to you, but there could also be a situation, Sagittarius, where it feels like nothing is moving or nothing is changing, but yet what you can't see is that things are propelling um, themselves forward in a very fast way or there's like a really fast change that's going to come and because like the change has happened over such a slow period of time maybe you're not even noticing the progress or noticing the that it's on its way or something I'm sorry I didn't mean to go into that but I had to say it because that's what I was feeling okay so you have the Knight of Wands, the Queen of Swords, and the Page of Cups. So I feel like Sagittarius, the Knight of Wands to me is an unpredictable knight. He's a fast-moving knight. It's funny because I was just talking about that and I didn't even put that together. Um, but he's also inconsistent and unpredictable, right? <laughs> you have the Queen of Swords here, which look at that. Not amused by that. Not at all. So there's no amusement going on there. And then the Page of Cups, which can represent innocence, right? Or a friendship, but it can also uh, represent naivety and childishness. So I feel like when I combine this card combination, there seems to be, I guess, a bit of all of that going on. Like you could be dealing with another person or people that are just really getting on your nerves, really inconsistent, really childish, and it's just really bringing out like that inner bee, right? Whether you're a man or a woman, we all have an inner bitch, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and maybe really making you want to rebel, okay? Um, caution with that though, the energy isn't quite stable right now, so it's not a good time to have like over the top reactions or, you know, speak before you think. Okay. Um, but this could also be your energy Sagittarius. Okay. It's not always about other people. It could be that you are just like all over the place and maybe not thinking before you speak and it's just coming off, not how you intended, or maybe even immature, uh, or not well thought out. So be careful too, that like, <clears throat> that you're not letting yourself get so bothered or frustrated that you yourself are becoming um, childish in your responses, right? And I feel Sagittarius as a fire sign, and to, in my opinion, one of the most intense of the fire signs. Sometimes, because you're so blunt, it can be easy for you to slip into that energy, so be aware and be careful of that. Um, and if you're dealing with somebody else that's being like that, you know, set, yes, set your standards, but don't go chopping anybody's head off either. You know? <laughs> I wasn't ready. Yeah, I'm going to take note of these, but I'm going to put these back. Okay, what else? What else for Sagittarius? Five of Pentacles. Ooh, the Five of Cups. Is that song again? I don't even know the words to it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not like a huge Madonna fan. Not because I dislike her uh, at all. I just, like her music, I don't know. I just... I just not. But anyways, that song is coming through, and I hope not to offend any Madonna fans. But does if you know what that song is about, or like the lyrics, can you put it in the comments? Because I feel like it's coming up for a reason. Okay, 
The five, the five, the five. You have fives here. To me, fives can be conflict. It can be change. You have the card of stress. So, you know, I think change can be difficult, right? Even if, especially if we feel like we're under a lot of pressure, pressure to succeed or pressure in general, right? Sometimes change can feel like we're being put under pressure. Uh, but this too shall pass, Sagittarius. Don't let yourself get all down on your luck and feeling bad for yourself or, you know, get into a space where you're not allowing yourself to receive alignment, to receive the answers. When we're in a really low emotional space, we are no longer in receptive mode, which means we cannot hear the call of source when we're in that space, which seems... I know, a little unfair, right? Because don't you need your guides and your source the most when you're at your lowest? But the thing is, you're not a vibrational match to that benevolent energy when you're going into that space. So, uh, yes, you will get answers to your prayers. Yes, the solution will come, but not until you can raise your vibration out of this despair or out of this space of loneliness or misunderstood or whatever this is for you right when you raise yourself out of that vibration into a more balanced energy then it's like boom 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 the answer comes the solution lines up you know the right person shows up um things start working out for you again okay and now how long it may take to get to that point is solely up to you how long are you going to let yourself stay in the space of not enoughness of unworthiness of feeling bad um because that's how long it's going to take and you know a lot of people don't like that answer they, they feel like somebody should come rescue them from their darkest hour but for those of you who've lived long enough and had enough darkest hours you know for a fact nobody's coming to save you you know, spirit is always with you, is always guiding you, but you can't hear it when you're at your darkest. That's what's funny, is that all the accountability is put on us to raise ourselves up, to rise up, to come back to faith, to come back to hope. And that could be a very long journey, and some never make it. Or it could be a very short journey, just depends and how you handle things. How fast do you get back on your feet? How fast do you climb back up on that horse? How much do you believe in yourself? How much do you believe in spirit? How much faith do you have? You know, um, all of these things are really important because you get what you believe in. And so, um, I don't mean to give you that spiel Sagittarius, but that's just how the universe works. So I keep hearing pull your bootstraps up. But see, the beautiful thing is, is that whatever this chaos is that's coming through or the stress that's coming through, there is a beautiful ending. And I use that term loosely because there are no endings, just new beginnings. But on the other side of that, there's like balance, karma, you know, karmic balance coming to a situation. And then you're going to the Ten of Cups. You go from the Five of Cups, which is feeling like you've got nothing and no one. This is victim mentality here, by the way. Even though it may feel very real, it does not suit you to stay in that position. Because it's a very disempowering energy, although understandable. And I've been there plenty of times. <laughs> Lots of times. <laughs> Only to discover that I have to rise up. This is not a call for others to help me rise. This is a call for me to believe in me and rise. That's what this is. All right. So you go from this, feeling like you've got nothing and no one, to feeling like you've got everything and everyone. What a bounce back. That's what I'm talking about. There might also be justice coming to a situation that is bringing about this change in your emotion, but spirit would never encourage you to wait for a manifestation to feel better. You might be waiting forever. Spirit would always encourage you to feel better just because it feels good to feel better. But when you do that, it's a guarantee the manifestation will come. You understand? So let's see what else we have coming through. There's that darn song again. Come on. 
<laughs> the Page of Swords, the Moon. The Two of Pentacles. Oh my goodness, the King of Swords. What the heck? As a, I've, I, I'm not a Sagittarius sun, but my Venus is in Sagittarius, so what is this? You have two pages. Now, the pages to me can talk about children, yes. There also might be children involved, but it also talks about new beginnings. Yet, yeah, it's a very immature energy. It's very immature. This talks about gossip in particular. Okay, secrets, going back and forth, getting pissed off, very serious, very serious tone to this reading. I know I'm trying to make some light of it, but there seems to be something either very serious going on or something that you're taking very seriously or maybe feels that way, like you need to take this seriously. Um, and it's temporary. And you're going to break through it. It's going to bring some sort of new awareness that you were not privy to. Which is going to bring you to a higher level understanding that ultimately results in harmony. So you see there's a positive outcome here. But how short or long this lasts is going to be dependent upon how you choose to react and how long you plan to dwell. Just saying. So... There seems to be something weird going on here, Sagittarius, and I don't know if this is behind the scenes. I do believe it involves other people or at least one other person. Um, and it seems serious or somebody's wanting to be taken seriously. I feel like you kind of need to feel your way through this and just know, just know that you are guided, you are protected, you are worth it. But hold yourself to a high standard. Don't you become your own worst enemy. Do not self-sabotage. Do not become a child or immature or try to meet somebody with, with, you know, trade mud for mud. You know what I mean? Like this is a time for you to rise up. Rise up, Sagittarius. So let's see what the guidance is. Why am I being so firm with you? I love you guys. It's kind of like I'm being firm with myself. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Card number 38. I can stop attracting don't wants by attention to do wants. You cannot rid the world of things that bother you. You've got to rid your vibration of things that bother you. And when you rid your vibration of things that bother you, no things that bother you can come. But you cannot really rid anything from your vibration because there's no exclusion in this attraction-based universe. The only way to stop attracting something you don't want is by giving your attention to something you do want. But you have to take small steps. Take small steps. Begin thinking about what you do want. Sound advice. All right. Wow. What a doozy of a beginning of that. Let me... Um, Clear the table, and then we're going to go into your love, you versus them reading. Stay right there. I'm coming right back in just one second. Welcome back. All right, so Sagittarius, now we're going to go whoop, <laughs> into the love reading, the you versus them. I already have a card out. I hate you guys can't really see my table. Oh, goodness. Let me. Sorry. Hi. Hi, guys. Is that better? Okay, sorry. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're going into the you versus them love reading. I'm going to go back and forth between you and the person you may be connecting with. Keep in mind it's a general read. So, you know, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. It's a YouTube general reading, guys. Probably going to be about an intimate partner or an ex, but could be really about anybody in your life. Keep an open mind. Let's get it. Okay, so you have... Beyond the Illusion, and this person has the card of control. So, I feel like Sagittarius, some of you, oh my gosh, this is exactly, now that I think about it, the energy that I got in your spiritual reading, where there was like some sort of download or insight or clarity coming in that you were not previously aware of, 
And so I see that here again with seeing beyond the illusion. Now this person has the card of control, which I mean is pretty simplistic to understand. They may just very much want to be in control, you know, trying to control things. Maybe a controlling person. I don't know. We'll see. So let's look at recent past for my Sagittariuses. And then we'll look at how you're both perceiving and feeling about each other and most likely outcomes. So recent past for my Sagittarius. Four of Cups. The Knight of Wands. The Three of Cups. So, ooh, there's that Seven of Swords at the bottom of the deck. So, I feel like, don't ignore your intuition on this one, Sagittarius. Like, some of you um, may in the past have ignored your intuition or ignored your emotions, right? The Four of Cups is kind of like detaching from the truth of something or not looking at something that you don't want to see. Um, and so I feel in the past that may be how you have dealt with this relationship or just with things in general, kind of just like, yeah, shrug it off and try to move forward anyways and, you know, be your fun, bubbly self. Um, I feel like there has been, though, in the recent past, a lot of support surrounding you in the way of other people or friends or friendship, um, your social group. Um, the people that you can really rely on, I feel like showed up for you in a really beautiful way, whether you acknowledge that or not, I'm not sure. Um, and maybe it wasn't the people that you thought were going to show up, but sometimes that happens. Like sometimes people surprise us, you know, but, um, I feel you're kind of coming into a more supportive space as we come into the now energy. So let's see this person's recent past. I'm going to look at that song up. I keep, I keep hearing that Madonna song. I don't even know the words to it. That's what's really annoying. I know how the, like, the tune sounds. Uh, the Lovers, the High Priestess, and the Five of Swords. So it's funny that I was saying like maybe you didn't listen to your intuition. And I feel like. This person got the card of intuition next to the five of swords. Um, and it actually came out in the reverse. So I feel this person too had trouble, you know, listening to their inner guidance. And, you know, may have suffered a loss because of that. Or had a rejection or a loss in the connection for some of you. Despite the fact that maybe you had a very strong bond, strong connection. This is the Twin Flame Soulmate card here. So... Um, sometimes too, the five of swords reminds me of like self-destruction, like self-sabotage, you know, like this, this kind of vengeful stance. And so there could also have been that going on with this person where they were kind of like self-destructing, um, and maybe not even intentionally, you know, so Let's go further and look at how you're perceiving each other in the now. How do you think of this person? How do you perceive this person, Sagittarius, in the now moment? Page of Cups. The Hermit. I feel like a lot of you have tried to be open-minded about this or this person, you know? Um, the good thing about Sag energy is that you're not fixed and you're not usually closed off. You're usually very open-minded. Like you are the type of person to be the first to try, you know, <laughs> or the first to like jump or the first to, you know, explore something new. So I think that's one of the things I like most about Sagittarius energy is that openness and so I feel like for a lot of you, you're in the space where, you know, you have tried or are trying to have an open mind about the connection. Um, and, and yet you've done a lot of self-reflection as well. I, I feel a lot of reflective energy about this person, about whether to give this a chance, whether to put your time and effort and energy into this. You know, um, there's potential here, okay, but you have two pages. 
And that's funny because I saw two pages in the spiritual reading and sometimes pages could be immature or childish energy. So it may be that like in some ways you think this person like lacks potential, like maybe they don't have enough emotional maturity or experience for you or something like that. So let me see how this person uh, views the connection. How does this person perceive Sagittarius in the now? Two of Wands. Time moves slowly. That darn song again. Ah, get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> two of wands king of pentacles six of cups see this is funny to me uh it's the two of wands the first word that i've gotten I've, I, I've honestly never gotten this with this card before but i i definitely heard observant so i don't know if this person is very observant in nature or they like observe your behaviors or they observe you from a distance sometimes this could be at a physical or emotional distance but I definitely got the word observant. King of Pentacles is like a very... Okay, I'm just going to say what I'm feeling. Rest assured that this person has observed every detail of you. Especially if they're a Virgo. You know, or Scorpio. <laughs> just saying. But, um, and I only say that because Virgo and Scorpio are like, to me, brothers and sisters in the Zodiac. They're very similar in that they're very detail oriented and both would be great private investigators. <laughs> but you could be dealing with any Zodiac sign, but I just feel like this person is very observant. Could be somebody from your past or somebody you have past history with, but the Six of Cups is all about memories. So I feel like you may have memories with this person or they often think about the memories. It could also mean that they think about the past a lot, you know, um, rather than their future, which is kind of not the best thing for them because it keeps them stagnant, you know, especially if they're living in the past. So let's go deeper then. How do you feel about this person underneath it all? How do you feel justice? Ten of Swords. King of Swords. So, Ten of Wands. So, two Tens and Sword Energy. I feel like there's been a completion here. Uh, I, I think it's like a karmic completion, but it could also have been like an ending or a completion in the connection. Take it as it's resonating. But uh, to me, two Tens is like reaching the end point of something or yeah just quite simply that and then you have the justice card which to me is like justice being served and then the king of swords which is a very like contemplative all all consuming is the word that i got but I also wanted to say this is a very logical energy. Like what's showing up in the heart space that I think is so interesting is not a lot of feelings, all a bunch of head space. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know if you're all in your head about this, but I really don't feel like that. Now, some of you maybe. I really feel more so this energy of like, you're very logical about the connection, not heartfelt. I don't want to say you don't have feelings for this person, but some, I'm just going to say it bluntly. Some of you, you don't have feelings for this person. You, you know, you think about them from time to time, maybe, or you, you feel like it's done. Karma has been served. You've seen beyond the illusion. Bada boom, bada bing. Okay. You definitely know if you're in that category. Although, why are you at a love reading then? I don't know. Um, but not all of you. I, the other way I could read this is just 
maybe just in this moment right now, things are just heavy and you're just trying to get peace of mind and you're just not really feeling it, okay? <laughs> or wanting to feel it, okay? So let me see how this person is feeling underneath it all. Oh, I knew the Seven of Swords was going to come. I knew it. The Ten of Swords. Holy cannolis. The Fool and the King of Cups. Okay, some of you, I, I feel like the majority that's here has had some sort of completion with this person or an ending or something occurred. Okay. Or Sagittarius, you may have lost feelings, you know, or in this moment are just not wanting to be in tune with that, okay? Um, because this person has the Seven of Swords, the Ten of Swords. Which is a completion. Next to the Fool, which is a new beginning. And the King of Cups, which is a very emotional energy. And the Seven of Swords to me in this card, in this deck, is like my spy card. Like it's, I don't know if somebody tried to get away with something as well, because I also got, I've got that feeling like, somebody tried to get away with something and it ended this in betrayal or ended in a connection and then like they want another chance and they're very emotional and, oh my god and I'm getting the song Heartless by Morgan Wallen I think so heartless and I feel that's you well no I don't feel I feel you have less heart involved like you've cut off the emotional aspect of the connection or feeling emo you know like when you're mad at somebody and you just don't want to feel anything you know what i mean like some of you this is temporary you're just mad for a second and you're just detaching and whatever but then maybe you're going to come back around i don't know others of you this is done 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 been done been long done and the only reason it's showing up is because this person is still lingering they're still observing you they're still checking on your Facebook or looking at you or whatever because they're not over it you're over it they're not over it so take which whatever group is resonating with you oh such an interesting reading let's see let's see uh most likely outcomes nine of cups what 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 oh I can't with you seven of cups not sure Not sure how to feel. Nine of Cups. Do I need to let this go? For my own good. Give me one more. Come on. And it lands on Temperance. Wow. Wow. Okay, so basic. I'm going to read this a few different ways. Some of you are really not sure where to put like your love and affection. So you're just going to focus on your self and your success and your independence, you know, and try your best to let go of what you have no control over or over what you don't want in your life anymore, as well as judgment, as well as resentment, as well as the need to look at the situation through those eyes, right? Because see, you can let go of somebody physically but still focus on them in your mind in a negative way. And that's called carrying baggage. Okay. The only time you truly release is when you not just visit, when you physically release and also release it from your mind. It's harder to do the second one. That's the work, right? If that's the direction you're wanting to go. So there's another group of you where Uh, there's a, sorry, another lyric coming through. And then I'll let you in back in. 
And I don't mean to. Why you gotta be so heartless? Be careful about. Some of you are wanna be. Can I say this? I wanna say this right. Some of you are going to. Are, <laughs> be careful. I keep trying to say the sentence and it won't come out. I guess it's like some of you are being very careful with your heart, right? Uh, it's more so about being your best self, your baddest, most awesomest self. And it really doesn't have to deal with anybody else. You know, you do have a rebellious, independent shriek Sagittarius. It doesn't even have to be rebellious. It's just like, I'm okay on my own. You are one of the zodiac signs that can definitely do it on your own, you know? So if there's love advances or like love coming in, I feel a little bit of like ca caution or questioning about that, especially if it's coming from this person. Like they're trying to be sweet on you, sweet to you. I feel you questioning it. And then ultimately focusing on your own success, whatever that means, whatever you feel is best for you, okay? Now, some of you that are completely done with this connection, you may have new love coming in or have a new lover already, but you still have, I don't want to say doubts, but like sometimes like you still question, you know, like the validity or... You know what I mean? Like, that's what happens after we've been through kind of a toxic or a traumatic ending with another relationship partner. It, it, it's hard not to bring that into the next connection. And to some degree, I feel that happening or the potential for that to happen if you're attracting a new partner. But I feel like it's all right. Vet it. You know. Feel it out. But I think it's smart for you to smoke. Smoke us. <laughs> Focus on your own success at the same time, right? So let me see this person's most likely outcome. The Ace of Wands. And then I let you in and I don't mean why you gotta be so heartless. King of Swords, Ace of Pentacles, the Justice, and the Queen of Cups. I cannot deny that this all came out in the reverse and the Ace of Wands. So the first thing that I'm getting is like, there was somebody that was quite unstable in the spiritual reading. I couldn't tell if it was you or somebody you're connecting with, but that the first thing, the impression I got was pissed off. Like, I don't know if this person is pissed off or something's going on that's pissing them off or that could trigger them. Um, but it's like all, all of the loyalty, all of the peace, all of the balance out the window. This person might have quite the temper or when triggered, they really become that beat. You know what I mean? Which could be very triggering to you. And I felt something like that in the spiritual reading. But it's coming from a very emotional space. Like I feel like this person is hiding their emotions. And because of their desire to stay in control, they may not be... That, that may be why they're suppressing or hiding their emotions, you know, like they may not be sharing that with you, but there is like a pressure cooker going on here and there could be um, some triggering happening here. Now on the flip side, the other way I could read this is that it could be that this person gets at the same time inspired to stay committed to their own peace, to their own balance, and to really get serious about that. And also get serious about being truthful with themselves about their emotions and how they feel, you know. And they may be coming forward with that, which I feel would, I guess, confuse you, you know, kind of. But not really, because I feel like you're not struggling with this anymore. You know what I mean? Like, maybe you used to, but I honestly feel you just being very level-headed. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you're going to weigh it back or forth. Up to you. So, let's see what the most likely outcome, or not most likely outcome, <laughs> what the guidance is then for my Sagittarius. Card number 55, and I got two fives in your spiritual reading. Five, five, five. Look up the spiritual meaning of fives. 
Everything is always working out for me, is what the card says. Nothing ever goes wrong because every piece of contrast, no matter how wrong it seems, is always helping you to clarify what it is that you do want. And that is the thing that we want you to remember most of all. The contrast, no matter how it looks in any moment, is contributing mightily to your expansion. The things that you call things going wrong in your life are actually only the distance between the things that are so right and your current perspective about it. Wow, that is a powerful statement right there. Card number 55. Never a dull moment, Sagittarius. <laughs> wow, we're going to leave it there for now. Please comment and let me know how this pans out for you. Zodiac signs that you could be connecting with or have in your own chart. I have Libra. I've got a lot of air here, so I'm going to go ahead and say Libra, Aquarius, Gemini energy. Uh, but I also have Aries. I also have Gemini. I already said that. Uh, Libra. Could be dealing with another Sagittarius. Libra again. Virgo. Pisces. I felt Scorpio energy. Pisces again. Those are the primary signs, but uh, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If it did resonate, let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to give me a like, share, and subscribe. And hit that little bell down there. Subscribe. So you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, follow me on Facebook for more content. Otherwise, I'm wishing you the very best, Sagittarius. And until next time, my friends, I'll say.